Shalom and welcome to Simon Tzav Torah. This year is entitled Harbai number 140. So for those who permit married women to go up, so it's same as men, just the basic Allah is for men, basic Allah is for women, they learn it and then that's it. I don't think it's that simple. The many holy rabbis that prohibit married women from going up, Rabbi Nachum Rabbanovitz, Rabbi Lior, they did not write a tshuva on the topic, but the authors of al Hamor did write about it, and they wrote their concerns. So the concern about 72 hours that a woman, after relations, cannot go to the mikveh for at least 72 hours, because that's not so complicated. They just have to know when they were together, the last time they were together, and just make sure, wait 72 hours, that is not so complicated. And the idea that she's going to go to the maker at 70 hours and not make a bracha because not everyone agrees she has to even go to the mikvah. It's not Pasha that Paletta Shefazera, someone has relations. And now it's Paletta Shefazera, Shefazera may come out of her, that, that that would demand her waiting and waiting since the hours. It's not Pasha at all. They just make a bracha. So there's a two unique halacha. One, waiting 72 hours, which, okay, she has to learn that. And number two, she doesn't make a bracha. Not so hard. The shalom bias could be complicated, meaning a woman goes ahead, she plans to go with a group of friends to Arabite in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks from now. And uh, they're going to go on a Wednesday morning. She went to the mikvah for Sunday or Saturday night. So she can first go to the mikvah the second time, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday night. And that's fine. And then Wednesday morning, she go to Arabai with her friends. She took care of everything. But let's say Monday night, the couple has a nice walk together, has a beautiful evening together. They're feeling very close. They like to be with each other. So is it going to be a situation where he wants to be with her and she says, no, I want to go to Arabai tomorrow and therefore I don't want to be together. Or vice versa. It could get very complicated. Therefore, uh, it's very important that a couple really in this area works it through together. And if they can make sure that their Shalom Bayis stays 100% intact while they keep their commitment to Harabayit and they're willing to push off Harabayit, if that's what's necessary, the Shalom Bayis should take priority, then great. If there's any tension whatsoever, they should have a rabbi that they speak to, that they're comfortable with, to make sure that for the sake of Harabayat, they not they do not in any way compromise Shalom Bayis. That should not happen. Shalom Bayis should be the paramount importance. It's the centerpiece for the whole house. And then Harabayis can fit in with that as well. But it's crucial that there should be no compromise whatsoever. If that's the case, everything's worked out properly. The mikvah, the timing, the second mikvah without the bracha and the Shalom Bayis, then I think it could be a great, great mitzvah for the married woman to ascend the Tahara. Shalom.